Hey, Alex, what's up? And hey, everybody, welcome back to Passing Money. Hey, Alex, every time, you know, I talk to people all the time about investing, you know, that's like my go-to subject. No matter what the subject is, we always get back to investing. And some that I commonly hear and probably you commonly hear also is I don't have money to invest. And then when I sit down with them and I'm like, hey, let's just run a budget right quick to see where the money's going. And you see that they have an absorbing amount of money going to nothing items, going towards wants. Um, so in this video today, we're just going to talk about what are some of the things that we see when we do people budget who say they don't have money to invest. What do you see that they have in a budget that just make no sense to you? Well, we're in Florida. Uh, Bush Gardens, okay. passes, Disney passes, um, people that have Netflix, Hulu, HBO, Amazon, like can you just like pick two? I don't like, I don't know. Like I only got Amazon and Netflix and I'm good. Like, I, I don't know. Like, and I barely even watch it. My wife watches it. So, but that's what, that's about 30 bucks a month. So like, like you always mention this and it's funny cause it, it's true is people cut out cable, but then they add on all the subscriptions. It's like, but then there's also people that have both. They have all the subscriptions and then they also have cable. Um, mm -hmm. Cable was like immediately one that I thought was like totally unnecessary. So, I, I mean, I still see people with cable. I mean, that's expensive entertainment. I mean, people that are paying hundreds and hundreds of dollars a month for just just to watch TV. I mean, it's absolutely ridiculous. Um, so that and then, you know, like the iPhone forever plans. Um Phone plans, we talked about this one time. Phone plans, like people are paying like 60 to 80 dollars per phone per or per line. Um, that's crazy. That's absolutely insane. Um let's see. Uh <laughs> what you, food, I guess. So <laughs> for people that yeah, yeah. for people uh for people that can't or shouldn't be buying out. Um, the one, the crazy thing with buying food out for me that I see uh, with people that want to invest and want to get their budget straight, but they're living paycheck to paycheck is they're literally buying out every day. And sometimes right. more than once a day. It's different when you've got money, you've got the income to do it. But when you're just living on a regular minimum wage or a little bit above minimum wage income and then you're literally spending 1200 a month on buying food out it's it's insane like you don't have the income for that to make sense um so those those are some of the things i'm seeing i don't want to cover them all because i know you want to go into a couple right and, and you're right i mean and alex the reason why alex laughed is because you know i go buy some food. I was eating <laughs> sushi last night. <laughs> but that's another funny thing. Uh, I'll go out and eat sushi. Of course, I don't have social media, so I don't post it. Or somebody called me and somebody called me and somebody is usually somebody I gave financial advice to. And then they be like, hey, what you up to? I'm out eating sushi. Then they'll act like they're giving me financial advice. Oh, you out there. Oh, finance. Oh, sushi's not in the budget. No, sushi's not in your budget. Right. My budget is my budget's all right. But, but neither here nor there. But that the thing that I see, all the things that you said is 100 percent correct. The people cutting cords and they acting like they're being financially responsible, but then they underdate themselves with subscription plans to all of these uh different, you know, Hulu's and Disney Plus and all that other stuff. I can't agree with you more. The one that sticks out to me is most people don't even know where their money's going. So every time, you know, I sit down with somebody and ask them to do a budget, I always say, all right, they always, you know, they say, I don't have any money. This is where the money's going. This is how much money I got left. You know, they say one, you know, $100 above or $100 below their income. And then I always tell them before we start, I said, when we start this, once we're done, you're going to know that your number is way off. Because most people don't even know where their money goes. 
The money comes in, and the only thing they do is keep swiping, 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 swiping till the account says zero, and then they just wait for another paycheck, and they swipe some more. And then it's usually way above their expenses, way above where their income is, or it's way below, and they have no clue where the money went. So, I mean, for most most part, it's people, the money comes in, and then, of course, they you tell them you're going to sit down and get a budget, and then they're going to put on their smart brain. Oh, I only spent $100 for this. I only spent $300 for this. I only spent $400 for this. And then we fill out every line item. And then it's twelve dollars to $1,500 and quote unquote money that's out there in the wind. They don't know where it's at. So they $1,500 over where they, you know, spend. And then I look at them and I say, where's the money at? Uh, uh, and then I say, okay, let's pull out the bills and do it. Then we do it. And then it's still way below what they income is but then of course they hide stuff and they forgot stuff or, or they don't want to mention you know this secret you know uh vice that they have that they don't want to talk about but usually but usually the number is way above or way below it's never right there in it that's why uh, we are a country with over a trillion dollars in credit card debt because people don't know where the money's going that's the most amazing part to me they have no clue I mean, no clue. I mean, no clue. And then I do it with spouses. And then you're sitting there looking at them. I'm like, all right, well, $1,200. So we we accounted for everything. So where's this extra $1,200 at? And then they look at each other in shock. Like, well, where is the money? I know where the money's at. The money is just them swiping cards here, there, you know, out of sight, out of mind. They don't have to dig in their pocket and bring the physical money to the table to hand it to them and look at it and see what's being spent. And they just keep swiping the card. Next thing you know, they look up, no more money. Oh, we just we just poor. We can't afford. The reason why you can't afford it because you don't know what your money, where your money is going. I always say to people, and Alex, you'd have heard me say this at nauseum. Before any money comes into your house, you better tell your money what to do, or your money is going to tell you what to do. And tell you what to do means swipe. Oh, this looks like something I want, something I want. And I've talked to many people who got big nest eggs, who got big lump sum of money. And I always give the same advice. Have a plan for it. Tell your money what to do. And soon as the money hits your account, make sure you're actioning everything your plan says or where the money's supposed to go. If you hesitate, your money is going to tell you what to do. And next thing you know, you're not going to even get 50% of the stuff you're supposed to do done. And I've seen it over the years, time and time and time again. People getting lawsuit money, people... People getting lump sum of money from the VA, people getting money from, uh, you know, family members passing, what have you, and they blow it all and they sit in there with a sob story. And it's funny, they will call me before the money gets there to come out with the plan. The money arrives, I won't hear from them again. Then I will hear from them again months later after they blew all the money with the sob story. Why didn't you call me when you had the money? Because they didn't call me when they had the money because they didn't want me reaffirming, hey, you need to do what you're supposed to do. They wanted to do what they wanted to do. And what they wanted to do was be broke. And that's what they got. And then they want to look at people like you who save their money and say, oh, Alex, you're the reason why I don't have any money. They would never put the onus on themselves. And that's the one you know, surprising thing is people don't even know where their money is going. They're just out there just spending it blindly. And then they just look up and be like, man, I don't know what's going on, man. I'm just so broke. I can't even afford to do nothing, man. I, I, I can afford to spend a night somewhere. You know, I can't do, you know, and that's the life that people live. And then, then Alex, you're the asshole because you don't feel sorry. <laughs> right. I would say I am, but everybody think I am. So I'm going to start throwing it on you. Um. Yeah. The, the funny one to me to specify on that is, People don't know how much their bills are and they don't know how much debt they have. That's one that I've started to notice is like when I've tried to help people do a budget and I ask them like, okay, what, how much is your car payment? And they're like, uh, it's like three or 400. Like they don't even know. And then I'm like, well, how much do you owe left on the car? They're like, I don't know. I've never looked at it. What's your interest rate? I don't know. And I'm like, like they don't it's like they just like 
like they're just like active consumers they, they're not even caring what they're spending on they're just like oh i want that let me just buy it and then, let me not even look at the the financial burden it's going to have on me and that's just completely irresponsible to not even know what transaction is actually taking place you just look at the physical item and that's just what you tie yourself to um that that's one thing that i that i see often and one other that I uh, forgot to mention that is that this one is crazy to me is like people finance their furniture. Like I had no idea that was an option. I thought you just pay cash. <laughs> and then I heard people like, like talking about like, Oh yeah, I've got debt on my sofa. And I'm like, wait, what, what do you mean? You got like a credit card? And they're like, no, you finance it through the store. Like I always just paid cash. I was like, Oh, that's the price. I got to save this much to buy it. Like, no, 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 uh, 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 uh. That, that right there, people tell you how much Alex go into a furniture store. Every furniture store you go into, they try to get you to finance, to finance it. So you now y'all know Alex ain't never in a furniture store. Y'all better check y'all living room. Alex probably robbed y'all of y'all good. He ain't never in a furniture store. But yeah, I mean, it, may, it, makes, a, it makes all the sense in the world. You know, people do the craziest thing. You finance furniture. I mean, you can go, literally go on... Facebook marketplace, you don't have to get extravagant stuff. You starting out, especially for the people that starting out, you don't need to have new anything. Go get something that you can sit on, sleep on, watch TV. I use milk crates back in the day. That's just what whatever it takes that I'm not spending on a monthly basis. Like the whole the whole food thing that I always get people to. And Alex, I didn't mean to cut you off, but it was just funny when you oh, brought yeah. that one. <laughs> you and your furniture. But um, the the one thing I because people always pick on me and my uh food habits, but I don't bring nothing to the game that will make it a payment for me month after month. If life gets hard, life tightens up, then I just stop going out. I don't have an obligation to go eat. When I didn't have any money, I Set my butt down and didn't eat. Eat out, brother. I didn't eat out. And then, so that's the that's the nuance of it is everything that I do is no monthly payments involved in it. It's just, hey, this is what I do. When times get hard, okay, I just don't do it. But people can't even switch that off of, hey, I can't afford to do that. I'm not doing it. But the thing is, most people put it as a payment plan on their life that when times get hard, they still have these payments. They still got the credit card payment. They still got the furniture payment. They still got the car payment. They still got all these payments on a month to month basis, no matter with your job or if you don't have your job. And it's amazing to me how people think that lenders and landlords supposed to feel sorry for you. You didn't sign a contract that said, hey, I'm going to pay this if I keep my job. You signed that you're going to pay this no matter what, every month at this time, no matter what. So you signed your name to it. So do what you said. But sorry, Alex, for cutting you off, but you and the furniture finance things, no. but they got me. <laughs> no, you're all right. Yeah, no, that's just one that I never knew people did. Um, and yeah, those are, those are just a few that I see. Those are some crazy ones. Um, people like the, the idea that people don't even look at the price or the debt obligation of an item. They just look at what they want and how it makes them feel emotionally. Like that's, that's crazy to me. I've never, I've never bought something like that. And I, I, I can't comprehend that way of thinking. Right? It's just weird. I don't know. It's crazy. With all that being said, guys, if you like the video, hit the like button. Leave a comment down below. Let us know about your craziest purchase. Share this video. Subscribe. And we'll see you guys in the next one.